All right, let's talk about those cases that really make you think. Today, we're diving into an incredible clinical case from the rounds of Professor Muhammad El Alfi. It's about a patient with pain so severe, so relentless that it defied all treatment, simply because for seven years, everyone was looking in completely the wrong place. And that brings us to this number, seven. That's how many years a 30-year-old man was absolutely tormented by this debilitating, incapacitating pain. Seven years. I mean, you can just imagine it. For seven long years, he was just trapped in this cycle of excruciating attacks. And the worst part? Every single scan, every lab test, every specialist he saw, they all came back normal. Clinicians were at a total dead end. Okay, so let's dig into the clinical picture here. What exactly were the features that created this seven-year-long diagnostic mystery? So here's the story we get. This guy has these brutal, recurrent attacks of severe, diffuse abdominal pain. They last for days, and then poof, complete remission for weeks, sometimes months. But here is the critical red flag, the thing that should make every clinician's ears perk up. The pain was completely resistant to analgesics. We're talking even powerful opioids like pethidine. They barely made a dent. So naturally, the workup was extensive. I mean, you name it, they did it. Upper GI endoscopy, yeah, it showed a tiny, clinically insignificant hiatal hernia. No way that's causing this kind of pain. All the lab work, CBC, LFTs, amylase, completely normal. They even did a gene test for familial Mediterranean fever, right? A super common differential for this kind of periodic pain, and it came back negative. The mystery just got deeper. And because the diagnosis was a mystery, the treatment was basically guesswork. They threw the kitchen sink at this guy. Colchicine, PPIs, NSAIDs, more opioids. And the result? Absolutely nothing. Not a single thing worked. All it did was leave the patient with zero improvement and a huge monthly bill for meds that were doing nothing for him. Okay, this is where everything changes. After all these years of hitting brick walls, a master clinician, Professor El Elfi, comes in to re-examine the case. But he doesn't order another scan or another lab test. Instead, he changes the entire focus of the investigation with one single pivotal question. He looked right past the physical symptoms. He turned to the family and asked something nobody had really dug into before. But what about his mental state during an attack? How does his behavior, his psychological state, change, specifically when he's in the middle of one of these episodes? And the family's answer was the absolute breakthrough. They said he becomes a different person. During the attacks, he'd get restless, disoriented, forgetful, super agitated, just not himself. And then as soon as the pain was gone, he was right back to normal. It was like a switch. Now that was the first huge clue. Abdominal pain plus these transient neuropsychiatric changes, that combination he knew should always raise suspicion. It screams that the gut is probably not the real culprit here. This wasn't a GI problem. This was a sign of something systemic. And so armed with this new clue, the professor went looking for the final piece of the puzzle in the physical exam. And where did he look? The neuro exam. He performed a really focused neurological assessment and found these subtle but absolutely definitive signs, some mild wasting of the hand muscles and a classic glove and stocking sensory loss. Boom, clear evidence of a peripheral neuropathy. So let's put it all together now. We have all the pieces on the table and suddenly a crystal clear pattern emerges. The abdomen, the brain, the peripheral nerves, these weren't three separate problems at all. They formed a classic diagnostic triad. And here it is, the triad that cracked the case. Number one, severe episodic abdominal pain. Number two, transient neuropsychiatric changes. And number three, a peripheral neuropathy. When you see these three together, you have to think systemically. And that specific triad points directly to one unifying diagnosis, acute intermittent porphyria, or AIP. You see, the pain was 100% real, but its source was never, ever the gut. AIP is a rare metabolic disorder, an inherited defect in the heme synthesis pathway that leads to a buildup of potent neurotoxins that just wreak havoc on the nervous system. So now that we have the right diagnosis, the whole management strategy changes. We stop trying to treat the gut and instead focus on controlling this underlying metabolic storm. And the management strategy is really twofold. 
First, for the acute attack, the goal is to shut down that toxic pathway. We do that with things like IV 10% dextrose, which downregulates the key enzyme, and IV hemin if it's available. Then, for the long term, it's all about prevention. That means rigorously avoiding all the known triggers, certain drugs like barbiturates, fasting, dehydration, alcohol, and stress. This case is just packed with timeless lessons, real pearls of clinical wisdom. So let's break down the key takeaways that we can all apply in our own practice. First, and maybe most importantly, pain plus psychiatric changes plus neuropathy, that is a massive metabolic red flag. You have to see this triad not as three separate problems for three different specialists, but as one single urgent signal of an underlying metabolic disease. The second pearl is this. In any case of unexplained abdominal pain, you can't skip the neuro exam, ever. The abdomen might just be the messenger, not the source of the message. Just like the professor showed us, the real answer might be hiding in those subtle neurological signs. And finally, we have to fight against diagnostic momentum. Not all periodic pain is FMF. If the pattern doesn't quite fit, if the treatments for the common stuff aren't working, that is your cue to look beyond the gut and maintain a high index of suspicion for the zebras, for the rare conditions like AIP. So in the end, think about this. A seven-year ordeal of suffering and misdiagnosis wasn't solved by some fancy new scan or an expensive test. It was solved by a single moment of pure clinical insight. This wasn't luck. This was medicine practiced as an art. And we want to give full credit where it's due. This analysis was based on the brilliant clinical pearls from Professor Mohammed El Alfi's rounds, as documented by Dr. Mahmoud Wafa. And that really leaves us with a critical question to carry into our own practice, doesn't it? How many other abdominal pains out there are just hiding a systemic secret, waiting for one of us to finally ask the right question? Thanks for joining this explainer.